The Karl Marx Hof in Vienna's 19th district is regarded as the most prominent symbol of the social municipal housing program of the 1920s and 30s, and as such, is anchored in the annals of international architecture. The site of a civil uprising in February 1934, only four years after its opening, the complex was, at the time, almost revolutionary in terms of modernity. In the early years of its existence, the Karl Marx Hof would experience troubled times. Today, a plaque commemorates residents who would be expelled by the Nazis for religious or racist reasons, many of whom died during the Holocaust. The Karl Marx Hof was designed by Karl N., a student of Otto Wagner. It was built at a time when the housing situation in Vienna was dismal. Although monumental in appearance and size, parks, playgrounds, and courtyards make up 80% of the complex. Enns declared intention was to design a building that visually expounded the proletarian culture. Fortunately, much of the original architectural substance and ornamentation has remained intact. In the Wash House No. 2, originally housing bathing facilities, a permanent exhibition entitled Red Vienna can be found. The topics featured, a history of Red Vienna from 1919 to 1934, Red Vienna's communal housing and auxiliary facilities, clubs of the Social Democratic Workers' Party, festivities of Vienna's working class movement. The Karl Marx Hof was built from 1926 to 1930 and officially opened on October 12th. It is not the largest, but certainly the most famous of the Red Vienna municipal housing complexes. It's over one kilometer long, that is 1,100 meters, and had about 1,380 flats for approximately 5,000 people. And a housing complex of such dimensions naturally needed an appropriate infrastructure. So there were not only apartments, but also two wash houses, one in which we now stand, two kindergartens, doctor's offices, a maternity center, a dental practice, health insurance office, post office, a pharmacy, etc. It is the encompassing infrastructure and the proximity of the same that still appeals to and attracts residents today, a kind of neighborhood infrastructure that, unfortunately, is slowly but surely disappearing. For the working class, the novelty of the apartments was that, for the first time, water and toilets were inside the flats. Until 1900, in the Grundezeit houses, both the toilets and water were in the corridors, which meant that several tenants had to share a toilet. Here the toilets were inside, a small vestibule shielded the apartment from the stairway, and water was likewise inside. For the early tenants of the Karl Marx Hof, that was veritably a dream come true. Although many of the apartments were, and still are, relatively small, the spacious parks offer residents relaxation and recreation, and each of the innumerable balconies provide a lovely room with a view. Welcome to our home. And here you can see our kitchen. We've been living in the Karl Marx Hof for 10 years. What we especially like is the good location, the quiet courtyards, and the excellent subway connection. Here is our living room. And now we enter Marcel's room. The apartments have long since been upgraded to realize the requirements of modern-day residents, but the philosophy of communal living still prevails in this huge housing complex. Tenants have come and gone, but the Karl Marx Hof remains a rampart of municipal housing development.